Hi there. Today, I would want us to have a look at how to draft, cut and sew this easy but beautiful bridal shower robe. This is a very detailed and beginner-friendly tutorial. If this is something you'd love to learn, please do stick and stay and let's do it together. From the shoulder to the top of the bra, where the dress will be starting from is 7 inches. To the nipple is 10 and half. From the shoulder to the underbust is 14 inches. And from the shoulder to the waist is 17 inches. And so we are going to mark all those. On our nipple line, we are going to mark our nipple to nipple measurement divided by 2. The nipple to nipple measurement is 8 inches divided by 2 gives us 4. And so we mark 4 inches. And we mark the same thing on the waistline. We draw a line to connect these two points. I'd want to take 2.5 inches as that on both the underbust and the waistlines. And so 2.5 divided by 2 gives us one and quarter on both sides of this very line we have here. We'll draw a line to connect these two points. From the underbust to the bust point or the nipple to nipple point, we'll connect this that to that, but then using a curve. We repeat same for the other side. On the top here, we are going to mark the same 4 inches as we had at the nipple to nipple area. Then on this side of that point we just marked, we are going to mark half of an inch and on the other side we would mark one and half. Then we draw curves to connect that point to our nipple point. The next step, we are going to measure from the underbust point here all the way through the nipple to the top and then we we'll compare the same to this very side. Whatever we get for this very line, we will do the same for the other line. And so we are going to measure this. So in measuring this, we get 7.5. We are going to mark 7.5 starting from this point to wherever we get to at the top here. We do this to ensure that when we are joining this very side to that side, the two would be the same. We don't want one to be longer than the other. The next step, we are going to mark one inch above the shoulder to nipple line upwards. This is going to serve as our chest line. And so we're going to divide our bust measurement into four and mark it and then we add our seam allowance on this very line. And so the bust is 42, divided by four gives us 10 and half, plus our two inches seam allowance. At the center front line, we are going to move from the shoulder to nipple line upwards by one and half. This is going to be how deep we would want our cleavage length to be. And so we are starting from this nipple point upwards by one and a half inches. On this point, we are going to take off half of an inch. This is the interval in between the cleavage. Then we draw an arc to connect the dart we have at the top here to the half inch we just marked. Next, we will connect this point we have here also to the underbust, also using a similar curve as we had at the other side here. Next, we are going to mark our nipple to nipple interval as we had here on the other side. But because we want to widen the breast cap a little bit, we will add this half of an inch we have here to it. So the nipple to nipple was supposed to give us 8 inches, divided by 2 gave us 4 inches. 
So we would have ordinarily done 4 inches from the nipple point towards the side seam. But in this instance, we are adding half of an inch to it to make it 4 and half. From this 4 and half we just marked, we are going to connect an arc from this point to the underbust. We are going to draw an S-like shape to connect the bust divided by 4 we had here all the way to the top as we marked. Next, we are going to subtract 2 inches from our waist measurement and then divide the remainder by 4. And so our waist measurement was supposed to be 35 minus 2 gives us 33. And so 33 divided by 4 inches would give us eight and a quarter and so mark eight and quarter on the waistline we'll add our two and a half inches that as we took away from the bodies here then we'll add our two inches seam allowance as we had added on the top and so we have our waist measurement which is 35 minus 2 giving us 33 divided by 4 which gave us eight and quarter and then we added our two and a half dart allowance to it. And then our two inches seam allowance was also added. Then we would draw a line to connect these two points. With the front pattern duly drafted, we are going to extend the chest line and the waist line to assist us in getting our back pattern. I'm considering this to be the center back. And so what we are going to do would be to divide our bust measurement into four and mark here, and then we'll add our seam allowance to it. And so the bust is 42, divided by four gives us 10 and a half, plus two inches. On our waistline, we're going to subtract two inches from the waist, which was 35 to give us 33 inches, just as we did for the front. And then we'll divide 33 inches into four to get eight and quarter. And then we'll mark it, add our seam allowance of two inches to it, and also our dart allowance of one and a half inches also will be added. And so this is eight and quarter plus one and a half dart plus two inches seam allowance. We'll then draw a line to connect this to that point. To fix our back dart, we are going to mark 4, which is the nipple to nipple as we had for the front, and then we add quarter of an inch to it. And so it will be 4 and quarter on both the chest line and the waist line. Since we added one and a half dart allowance to the waist, we are going to take 3 quarters of an inch on both sides of this line we just marked here. Now we'll label them our C, S, center front, side front. This will be our side back and our center back. These arrows are indicating which part of the patterns will be heading towards the top. We'll go ahead and cut this. A bit of modification needs to be done on the back pattern. We'll fold this dart onto the other dart. And then we'll straighten this line. When it comes to the top, we'll take off our 2 inch seam allowance first. Then we'll mark 
one inch from the center back downwards. Right, we'll go ahead and cut this as well. We're going to tape this down so that when we're using this to cut the fabric itself, we wouldn't have to stitch the dot again. And so this is it, the front and the back. Because I'm using a soft bobbinet for the front bodice, I'll tape these two together so that I already have to cut the various pieces and join them again. This is how we cut the various pattern pieces and how we add our seam allowances to them. We have solid taped the two together and gone ahead to use it to cut our bobbinet. And so this is our bobbinet, it's a bit soft. We have added seam allowance to this very side, that is the interior part where we'll be joining our brazier cap. That is where we've added our seam allowance. And also, when you look at the front here, you would see that I've left some excess here. This is going to be used to turn back as facing for the cleavage area. And so that's how come we have this. And so after dealing with this, we go ahead to the back pattern. With the back pattern, we cut exactly the same thing. I have used violin to interface the lining. And so as you can see, it's quite hard. I've done so for the two. And also, when it comes to the back fashion fabric itself, I've also fused it with an interface. That is quite soft. And this is the woven tricot I've used. When it comes to the caps themselves, you see that we've cut various pieces. This is the violin that we've used to fuse the lining. We've also used the woven tricot or the suit stiff to also fuse the fashion fabric itself. In addition, I have cut this. These are quite structured suit canvas. That is two in one suit canvas. And so you see that it has warden at one side and then at the back, you see the canvas there. It's a bit structured. And we're using this for the breezer caps themselves so that it is able to give it some structure as we want it. And so when it comes to adding the seam allowance to it, you'd see that there's no seam allowance on the top here, but then I've added seam allowance on the side and on this side as well. When we come to the S, the same thing, the allowance is added on all the sides, excluding the top here. And I've also cut the same pieces as I had cut for the C. We'll be going ahead to stitch the various pieces together. But before then, let us identify the fabrics as I had used them. Sometimes people would just be asking questions, how do I get this and then where do I get this? And so let me just identify them. This is the suit canvas or the coat canvas. This is the two-in-one type. And so it has a canvas on one side and then you see a warden which has been fused on the other side. It is a bit structured as you can see, right? From there, let's look at this very one too. This is also an interface which I used to fuse the fabric itself. This is because usually when you fuse the fashion fabric with this interface and then you wash the fabric, you usually see a bit of crumbles on the good side of the fashion fabric. And it becomes quite difficult even after ironing them. And so instead of this, I would prefer to use the woven tricot or the coat stiff as some would also call it. Again, this is the fabric that was used for the project itself. That is the fashion fabric itself. And this is the paradise fabric, very light. It's more like the bridal satin, but then it has a bit of stretch and then it drapes quite well as well. This is the extra extra hard interface that we use. This is the violin. And this is the, the paper type where you can easily tear on this very side. This is what we use to interface the lining itself. This is called bobinet. And so when it comes to the felt bobinet, we have them in different textures and then different shades and colors. This is quite strong and it also has a skin-like, you know, tone. It looks more like the skin, as you can see. And so it becomes quite easy to use when you are doing a project like this, where you'd want it to look as though it is the person's skin that is showing. 
and so this is it it looks quite light and that you can see through very easily we also have this other bobinet which is quite harder this is way harder than this very one but then this is quite uncomfortable because it itches so much and then it frees off so easily yes and so you can use this and then you can also use this but this is harder and this is quite soft and then easy to deal with and so this is what we are using for our project today we'll first pick c and s and then we'll stitch it on this side make sure not to turn it the other way around or to turn any other any other direction because when you do that it becomes so difficult to stitch them and so it should just follow the same way you are done during the drafting process And so we'll repeat the same thing for the other part. That is the other part of the lining and also the fashion fabrics themselves. For the fashion fabric, I have decided to stitch it onto the canvas. And so we're going to place it like this. And then we we'll stitch all around very close to the edge. This is just to secure the two together. We stitch the S and the C together, just as we did for the lining. Then we top stitch. For the lining, we are going to insert our bones. And so this is how we deal with it. I'll just measure from the midpoint here all the way down here. And I get six and a half. And so with a six and a half, I'm going to cut five and a half, meaning the bone would not reach this top, neither will it reach the down here, so that it's able to suspend in between. After that, I want to fix one other bone on this side and another on this side as well. And so what you do is that you just measure the distance to which you want to fix the bone and then you leave a bit of space down here and another on top and so just watch this and then you'd know how to fix the bones And so the reason why we're doing all this is because we want to make the cup very solid. And so go ahead and repeat the same for the other side. Next, we are putting the lining and then the self cups together. And then we stitch just the top from here all the way to the other side.
So we're going to create notches and then we top stitch on the lining, leaving the fashion fabric itself. We're also going to stitch the two together, securing them at the edge here. This is very, very neat on the good side and it's also structured at the wrong side. For the boning channels in the bobbinet, this is what you're going to do. There was a line here, which was the dart line. And so you can see it marked here, very small. Yes, we're going to stitch a boning channel on that. What I do is that I'll fold this into two and after folding it into two, it should measure one inch. So we'll open this Place this one inch on the side, just a little away from where the marking is, about one eighth of an inch away from it. Then we'll go ahead and stitch quarter of an inch so that we'll be able to flip this whole thing upwards like this and then stitch again. For the one at the center front, instead of folding it just like this and then stitching as I did for these two, I rather flip it to the back and then finish the top here before I'll turn it to the good side and then come and place it on. We'll place the finished edge right on the side of this very part mm -hmm. where we're going to fold it backwards. So this is where we're going to place it. For the side one, I'm measuring two and three quarters from the edge here all the way here so that we place our channel there. And then I'm measuring two and a half down here. Now we draw a line to connect the two. Then we're placing our channel there and then we stitch and flip to the other side just as we did for these ones we repeat the same thing for the other side then we cut off the excesses it's now time to fix our cups onto our dress we are matching the center piece 
to where the darts should have been. And then the top here would also match with this side. And the other side would match with this side. And so we have a little allowance here and that is the seam allowance we had to be able to finish this part of our dress. We repeat same for the other side. Because of the nature of this bobinet, what I've decided to do is that I will neither stitch it nor overlock the edge. What I want to do is to use this very solder iron to bend the edges so that it doesn't free off. We are going to fold the seam allowance that we have here and then with the help of a hem tape or hemet or whatever you call it, we would fuse this together. That is to finish the edge as you see it. After finishing the edge, the next step would be to finish this part too. And so what you are going to do would be to flip this to the wrong side and then we'll flip one of this to this side and go ahead and stitch. We are left with the other side. We would also push it inside like this. Then we place this on. We use thread a needle to hem this part in place or we can as well use the hem tape to also hem this part in place. This is how we are going to create our boning channels for the back pattern. Remember we had a duct line at the back and that duct line was folded and then a masking tape was used to tape it down but you still have the line created here. We are going to move from the top here towards the side seam by about 4 inches and then we'll do 3 inches for the down part. Bear in mind, this is just a boning channel which is supposed to support the back to make it very strong and so it doesn't really matter the figures that you use. You'd have to make sure that the bone slants and so we are doing 4 inches on the top here and then 3 inches down here and so we're going to trace this same thing onto the lining which we had used our violin to stiffen. We repeat the same thing for the other side of the back pattern. We are going to insert our bones. I'm using the ridge line bone which we're going to stitch on. Just as I've always said, if you'd want to use this stitch on bone or ridge line bone, what you do is that you make sure you leave about half of an inch on top and half of an inch beneath so that when you are finishing the top and the down part, you don't stitch on because when you do that, it becomes difficult to turn the lining to the wrong side. We're going to repeat say for this and for the other part of our back pattern as well. We put the fashion fabric and the lining good size together. And then we stitch the top here. We're going to flip all this to the wrong side like that and then we will top stitch on the lining part. After the top stitching, we are going to stitch that part which is going to serve as our centre back where we will be doing the lacing.
then we're going to stitch the base of the fasten fabric and then lining together making sure that we align them all on the same side and then we do same for this side this is just to secure the two together and it also makes working with it very easy because the two would not be pulling up and down it becomes very stable Repeat the same thing for the other side of our back pattern. With a skirt, we would use this as our starting line. From the waist to the length of the skirt as we want it is 20 inches. And so we would mark 20 inches plus half as seam allowance, making it 20 and half. We add 2 inches hem allowance to it. From the waist to the hip, we are marking 9 inches plus half. That is for the waistline, making it 9 and half. Because the fabric I'm using for this skirt is a paradise fabric which stretches a bit, we are going to calculate 5% of all the horizontal measurements. And so the waist was supposed to be 35. I subtracted two inches before it was divided into four. That is when we're doing the basic bodies. And so what you are doing right now is that we have a waist of 33, calculating 5%, and so it will be five divided by 100 times 33, which will give us a total of 1.65. And so you'd subtract the 1.65 from the 33 and then you'd get 31.35 and so that is five percent that has been taken off 33 we are going to get 31.35 when it gets to the hip measurement we are going to do the same thing it's going to be 42 times 5 over 100 and then the answer would give us 2.5 then we would subtract the 2.5 from the 42 to also give us 39.9 and so in this draft we are going to consider the waist as 31 and half it was supposed to be 31.35 i'm just rounding it up to give us 31 and half for the waist and then the hip is also going to be rounded up from the 39.9 to get 40 and so we are considering the waist to be 31 and half and the hip to be 40. that's what we are doing right now and so 40 divided by 4 gives us 10. We we'll would mark 10 and then we we'll add our 2 inches seam allowance to it. Or the waist divided by 4 is going to give us 7 and 7 8, which is almost 8 inches. And so we're going to mark 8 inches and also add our 2 inches seam allowance to it. And then we'll mark our hip, which is 10, because it gave us 40. And then we'll add our 2 inches seam allowance to it. When it comes to the knee line, we are going to use the hip measurement and then we take off our 2 inches seam allowance to it because we want the down part to be penciled. And so we are going to do 40 divided by 4 which gave us 10. We are bringing it to the knee. And then we take off 2 inches as allowance instead of adding it to it. We'll join our waist to the hip and from the hip to the knee. We'll go ahead and cut this. This is the front, as you can see, and this is the back where we've left our zipper allowance at the back. I've also folded the hem lines inward, as you can see. We'll take the back skirt and then fix it onto the top. And 
And so this is the side seam, and this is the side seam for the skirt too. And so we're just going to match the two here, just like this. Because this stretches, I'd want to pull it just a little bit before fixing it onto the top of our bodice. We'll go ahead and stitch this and repeat the same thing for the other side of our back pattern. It's now time to insert our bones into the various channels. What you do is that you'd measure the distance from the top to the bottom of each channel and then you cut a bone that is about half of an inch less than what you got. And so imagine this, I get seven and a half. I've cut a bone into seven inches length. We're going to insert the seven inches bone through the channel because when we're doing the sewing we left some space here we insert it at the top so just like this that is in between the first and the second lines so that when you insert the bone into the channel as you see here it wouldn't appear at the back but rather you'd have the fabric showing at the back we will repeat this for the others as well and so for all of them we are pushing it through so that there's a bit of space left down here for us to be able to finish the skirt part of our dress. We are going to put our tool net on, but then we are leaving the allowance that we have on the dress. And then we'll put the tool net in between. And so it doesn't have to exceed the seam allowance we have here. Our seam allowance is two inches. And so we are taking two inches, but then I would want to add half to make it two and a half inches. That is where the two nets will start and end. Now I'll measure the distance between the starting and the ending point where we are to fix our two nets so that we'll know the length. We get 15 and a half and so we're going to run gathering stitches on the base and then we we'll pull it to make sure that we get exactly 15 and a half inches. It's now time to do the gathering. So we'll continue till we have fully gathered everything to get our 15 and a half inches. And so we'll go ahead and stitch this, but then making sure that we stitch on the tip because we are just pasting this. More so with the length of the tool, I have not really cut it because it is after the person has worn it that you will see how long you would want to make the, the length. And so I've not really cut it. And so it can be two inches or one inch, depending on how long you want it to be. After stitching this beautifully, we are then going to put on our skirt, matching it good size together. We'll then go ahead and stitch this. Next, we're going to Knitting the edge. I've gone ahead to cut the tool net. This is just about one yard. That is 36 inches. We're going to sew the center back and then fix our zipper. So we are taking our zipper allowance off. That's just about one inch. This is quite faint. We are marking 10 inches below the waistline and that is where our stitches would end and then the zipper would continue i have several videos on youtube which explains how to fix the zipper and so i'll put a link in the description box and you can also check it out on the screen and so we didn't go back to how we fixed the zipper in this video but then we are taking off our seam allowance off from the waist to 
the zipper is going to be 10 inches below the waistline and from here all the way downwards we are stitching it it is ideal to use the white chalk on the white fabric that is because it doesn't really taint it and so it's okay i can see it but then with the video i think it becomes quite difficult to see what we just did after stitching our zipper in place and closing our center back it is now time to put the front dress on top of the back and then pin both sides Then we take off 2 inches from this side and the same for the other side, just as we had added to our pattern. We will then move this to our sewing machine and then we stitch this and finish the hem as well. Okay, so we've gone ahead to take off our seam allowance, but there was a little mistake I did. Instead of the 49 hip, I did 42 and that is what I used for the calculation, doing the skirt pattern. But fortunately for me, I had added 2 inches seam allowance to it and so I was able to get uh, 49 that we had calculated 5% from, which we got 2.45. And so 2.45 minus the 49 was going to give us 46.55 and so when we divide that into 4 we get 11.6 which is just about 11 and half and so I have divided 11 and half times 2 I have multiplied 11 and half by 2 and then I have gotten 23 and so from the center to this part is giving me 11 and half and from the center to this part is also giving me 11 and half and so I've had to refine our help line instead of the 42 one that I had done, which was in between. And so we've done the correction. Kind courtesy, the two inches seam allowance we added. With the tool net for the skirt, this is what we are doing. The whole length is about five yards. And so we are using the width as the length instead. I folded it into two, as you can see here. And then the rough edges are rather on this side. And so I'm going ahead to knitting these two rough edges together so that we get a full piece that is all rounded. This is the knitting we want to do. And so we're going ahead to gather this so that we get exactly the waist that we require. But then we would want this to be a little longer than the waist so that we can overlap the two and then bottom it. So the waist measurement as we've used for the dress itself is 33. And so we're going to gather this so that we get somewhat around 36 that is about three inches more than the actual waistline for the gathering of our tool net we can either run loose stitches on the edge and then pull it to get our gathers or then we can use our ruffler foot in this instance we are going to use our ruffler foot and so we'll change this very foot
And so with our ruffler foot, we create this very easy garden on the waistline. And so after gathering our tool net, this is the waistband I've cut here. It has a weight of two and a half inches and the length is 36 as we want it for our tool net. Because this side is unfinished, I'll go ahead and flip this to the good size. That is good size together. And then we'll finish the top here and this other side to have both ends finished. With the edges finished, we'll go ahead and place our tool net on it. And then we run stitches. After stitching this together, I've also gone ahead to knitting the rough edge. And so this is what we have. I would want to flip it to the wrong side like this and then give it a top stitch. After we are done with this, we're going to use a hook and loop or velcro strap to fasten the two together. And so this is the hook and that is the loop. We're going to cut about five inches each and then we cut this into two to get two and a half right then we'll place one on this side like this and then the other would be beneath so that it's able to fasten this way and so we'll go and fix it and then come back to continue and so this is it, neatly finished, as you can see. You can use any other means of fastening that you want. We are cutting two yards of another tool net, which is 72 inches. We're going to fix this at the back. And so on the left side, of our back waist. That is where we're going to fix this. We're going to gather this and then we'll stitch it on top like this. We'll finish the waistline and then lift it upwards as such. And so this is exactly what you're going to do. We're going to stitch this on. So this is it, neatly stitched in place. Now we'll go ahead and fix our eyelets and then we are done with our beautiful bridal shower robe.